As a child, Laura adored rabbits. She grew up, became a private detective, and got herself a cute rabbit named Cinnabon. Once, she had to go on a business trip. She asked Sarah, her housekeeper, Annabelle, her cook, and Phoebe, her sister, to look after the animal. But when Laura came back, Cinnabon was gone, and all three women she had asked to look after her pet claimed they didn't know what had happened. Look at them attentively. Who is lying? It's the cook. See, it's Cinnabon's collar in her pocket. Well, Laura noticed that too. When Annabelle realized she had given herself away, she broke into a run. Laura dashed after her, but she couldn't catch up with the woman. Luckily, the girl noticed Annabelle run into a gym. She ran inside too. A security guard stopped her. Apparently, all members of this exclusive sport club were supposed to know a special passphrase to enter the facility. Laura was lucky to notice a note with a hint next to the door. Can you help Laura figure out the passphrase? That's for once in my life. And it was the correct answer, the guard that Laura threw. The girl searched everywhere, but didn't find Annabelle. But wait, the showers! When she entered the bathroom, she realized there were three people taking a shower there. But a moment later, she noticed that one person only pretended to be cleaning themselves. Who was it? It's the person in the second cubicle. The water is running, but there's no foam. They don't use any soap or sponge. But, surprise, surprise, the person who pretended to be taking a shower wasn't Annabelle. Then where could the cook hide? Suddenly, Laura noticed a white sheet of paper on the floor. She picked it up. It said, Follow the white rabbit. Look around the room attentively and try to figure out where the girl should go. See those bunny ears on that door? Laura should probably try it. But there was a combination lock on the door. And is that a riddle next to it? Laura started reading. The code is a three-digit number. 682. One number here is correct and well-placed. 635. One number is correct but in the wrong place. 206. Two numbers are correct but in the wrong place. 735. Eight. Nothing here is correct. Seven, eight, zero. One number is correct, but in the wrong place. Can you help Laura figure out the code? From statements four and five, we can understand that zero is the correct number standing in the wrong place. Six can't be the number we need. Otherwise, statements 1 and 2 would contradict each other. In this case, looking at statements 2 and 3, we can conclude that the correct numbers are 2, 5, and 0, and the code is 052. Laura opened the door and saw a long corridor. It led her to a large room. There, she saw a man dressed in black. He was sitting on a throne-like chair, holding Cinnabon. Well, 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 here you are. He said, If you want to get your rabbit back, you'll have to do something for me. Laura had no choice but to agree. You see, my wife Louisa disappeared during a performance she attended a week ago. Your task will be to find her. And the man gave Laura all the details. The girl questioned three witnesses. Dorothy said she had gone home right after the performance and hadn't noticed anything weird. Alina said that she had seen Louisa leave during the break with a tall, blonde man. And Anna said that she'd been on the phone with her husband and hadn't seen where Louisa had gone. Who knows something about Louisa's whereabouts? Alina, look, during the intermission, she wasn't wearing her glasses. Neither did she have her lenses on. Look at how clumsily she moved. 
But then, how could she see Louisa leaving with a map? After Laura pressed Alina, the woman cracked. She admitted that she had seen some woman pulling Louisa away, but she was afraid to tell the truth since the woman seemed extremely unfriendly. Alina gave Laura a piece of paper the woman had dropped, but whatever was written there, it was a cipher. Can you help Laura crack it? The note says, at the docks. When Laura got there, she saw three buildings. She understood she wouldn't have enough time to search all of them. She needed to choose the one where Louisa was kept, and fast. Can you help Laura? Look at the dark blue construction attentively. Next to the window, there's the word HELP, scratched with some sharp object. After looking around the building, Laura found three keys. She needed to figure out which one of them fit the lock. Hurry up! Right, this is the key! The door opened, and Laura saw a woman sitting in the far corner. It was Louisa! She helped the woman to her feet, and they stumbled away. Soon, they noticed three taxis. Which car should they choose? The first one doesn't have a license plate. That's suspicious. And the driver of the second taxi is the very woman who took Louisa away a week ago. She's wearing a fake mustache and a baseball cap pretending to be a man. Laura and Louisa should choose the third taxi. But luck wasn't on their side that evening. The car broke down before they could get to Louisa's husband. They had to walk. There were three paths in front of them. One led to a swamp. Toxic gases were floating all over the surface of the water. The second road was filled with poisonous plants. And over the third path, the air was swarming with agitated wasps. Which path should Laura and Louisa opt for? The second. At least the plants can't move. So, if the women are careful, they'll be able to avoid touching them. Finally, they arrived at Louisa's house. Once the man in black saw his wife, he hugged her and turned to Laura. I'm so sorry for using such methods, but I was getting desperate. I can't tell you why, but I had to keep her disappearance under wraps. That's why I chose to involve you. Thank you. I want to give something to you. But to get it, you'll need to crack this riddle. An electronics store owner came to work one day and saw that his safe was open. His money was nowhere to be found. He called the police. When a detective arrived, the store owner explained that the key to his safe was on the same keychain as the keys from his truck. Two of his employees, Andrew and Ryan, used the truck and had access to all the keys, but the men had always returned them. The detective questioned the drivers. Someone broke into your boss's safe yesterday. What do you know about this incident? Andrew said, I didn't copy the key. I wouldn't even know which one to copy. And Ryan said, I've been working here for three months and have never entered the boss's office yet. The detective understood who the thief was right away. Can you figure it out? Andrew stole the money. The detective didn't say how the criminal had opened the safe. Then how did Andrew know it? Laura got the answer right. The man handed her Cinnabon and a brand new smartphone, but it was protected by a password. When Laura tried to unlock the phone, that's what she saw. Write backward all the numbers. That sounded like a tough task. Luckily, Laura was very smart. She didn't need much time to write the correct answer and unblock the gadget. So what was the password? S-R-E-B-M-U-N-E-H-T-L-L-A. That's all the numbers written backwards. She couldn't believe her eyes. She'd been dreaming of this all her life. But to get it, she'd have to set off on a very unusual journey.
you tell which one of these men has a rich wife? The one on the left doesn't even have a wedding ring, so I'd say it's the man on the right. Okay, now look at these two. Who do you think has a dog? It's the guy on the left. Look, his shoes are all chewed. Must be his dog's job. Kaylin and Juliet are going to their friend's house to work on a group project. At least, that's what they told their parents. In reality, one of them is going on a date with her secret boyfriend, and she's going to meet him instead. Can you tell who? It's Kaylin. She's dressed too well for a study date, and no one normally wastes red lipstick for a group project. Amanda spent the whole summer in the countryside at her grandparents' house. Finally, she returned to her town, and two of her best friends came to the train station to meet her. Can you tell which one of the guys is secretly in love with her? Well, considering that the one on the left has flowers and candy for her, I'd say he probably likes her. Sydney and Louisa both failed their history test. Their mother grounded them and made them study all weekend. She was occasionally walking in the room to check on them. So she walked in again. Can you tell which teenager wasn't studying? It's Sydney. She's holding the book upside down. She must have grabbed it when she heard her mom walking in to pretend like she was studying. Look at these guys doing some housework. Who's not smart? That's the guy on the right. It's raining, but he's watering the flowers. Mrs. Riviera is a math teacher. She collected her students' homework, made them do a computer test, and started to grade the assignments during the class. She came across two very similar homework sheets and realized that one of the students copied the work of the other. Here are the students, Asher and Holden. Can you tell which one of them is the copycat? It's Asher. His hands are covered in fresh ink, which means he probably just did his homework right before the class. Mr. Reed came back home at night after another long shift. His wife was still up. He kissed her and went to bed. Mrs. Reed had been suspecting that her husband was cheating on her for a while already, and this time she wanted to know for sure. She decided to check his pockets. The next day, she told her husband that she knew he was cheating on her. Why? Look, there is a pair of keys in his pocket. His keys are hanging on the wall. So these are the keys from someone else's house. Ashley had a birthday party, and she invited some friends over. Liliana didn't want to go, so she lied that her mom grounded her and made her clean the room. Ashley was sad but understanding about it. To make it up to her, the next day, Liliana invited Ashley to her house to study together and to watch a movie in the evening. Ashley agreed, but at Liliana's house, she understood that she had lied to her. Ow! Liliana's room is still messy. If she had cleaned it the previous day, it'd be neat. A famous rich writer was living alone in a mansion and never went outside. The only people she ever saw were her cook, her gardener, and a cleaning man. One morning, before breakfast, the cleaning man found her poisoned in her room and called the police. The three of them were suspects. The cook was watching a cooking blog on YouTube. The cleaning man said he just came to start the job when he found the lady. The gardener was in the garden planting some flowers. Who poisoned the lady?
It must be the cook. It happened right before breakfast, but he wasn't cooking anything. He knew the breakfast wouldn't be needed that morning. It was summer break, and Ariana's friends invited her to go camping. Ariana wasn't really into camping, but didn't want to admit that she'd rather stay at home and watch TV. So, she said that her parents invited her to go to Greece. In reality, she stayed at home and was binge-watching TV shows. Her family sent her a vacation photo. Ariana photoshopped herself there and sent it to her friends. When her friends saw the picture, they realized that Ariana wasn't in Greece. How? Ariana photoshopped herself, but her friends noticed that everyone in the picture except for her cast a shadow. Hallie works at a gas station in a city suburb. It was calm and quiet there. One day, she only had three customers. The first one got something to drink. The second one got some chocolate bars, and the third one just paid for gas. One of them was a criminal, and Hallie reported him to the police. Who is the criminal, and how did she understand it? The second man paid with a $25 bill. Such a bill doesn't exist, which means he'd been printing money. Lola is a waitress on a giant cruise liner. One night after the restaurant closed, she found an expensive watch on the floor. She announced it on the cruiser's radio, and three people showed up to claim it. Roger showed Lola the tan line on his wrist and asked her to give him the watch back. Mary said she remembered dropping the watch near the entrance of the restaurant and wants it back. Susie kept asking if the watch was okay and if it was working. Lola decided that the watch belonged to Susie. Why? You've got 10 seconds. Roger's tan line on his wrist is too small compared to the watch Lola found. And if Mary remembered where she dropped the watch, why didn't she pick it up? Susie knows how expensive her watch is, and she was worried it broke. Jenna and Michael were out partying on Halloween night. Michael told Jenna she wouldn't dare to go to a 120-year-old abandoned castle on the other side of town. Rumor had it that a mad scientist used to live there. Without a second thought, Jenna started walking. She reached the house at 3 a.m. and the door was open. When she walked in, the crazy scientist showed up and told her, I've got a riddle for you. If you answer it correctly, you're free to go. If not, I get to do my scientific experiments on you. A sphere has three, a circle has two, and a point has zero. What is it? You've got nine seconds to find out. Dimensions. <laughs> Michael left his work and walked into the dark parking lot in the basement to get his car. When he approached his vehicle, he saw a four pin lock on his door. He kept looking at it when his boss showed up. He told Michael, I want to see if you're smart enough to get a promotion. You only get one try. If you figure the code, tomorrow you'll move to the executive's office. His boss gave Michael a piece of paper that read, Which was the latest passing year that was the same upside down? Michael started thinking of all the years that passed, and the next day, he got the promotion. You have 8 seconds. Think fast! It's 1961. Susie arrived at the dance studio for her rehearsal when she found her instructor unconscious on the floor. Next to him, there was a broken vase. Someone must have hit him on the head. Susie called Detective Allen at the scene, and he was suspecting three people who entered the studio that day. William, another instructor, said he had an emergency private class with a celebrity and left before anyone showed up at the studio. 
Mason, a professional dancer, said he took the week off and dropped by today to give the keys back to the dance instructor because he forgot them in his bag when he left the day before. Sally, a dancer, said she had class today, but when she showed up, she didn't see anyone through the window and assumed the studio was closed. Detective Allen knew exactly who was lying. You've got 7 seconds. It was Sally. Her fingers are covered in bandages and cuts. They must have happened when she broke the vase. Lucy was walking back home from the restaurant. She was talking on the phone to her sister and took a shortcut through a creepy park. Suddenly, someone came behind her and snatched her handbag from her shoulder. She tried to chase them, but it was too dark. She only saw a figure going into the cinema. Lucy followed them there, and when she went in, she only saw three girls standing there and questioned them. The first girl said she just got there, and she's waiting for her friend to arrive. She said she's holding a big bag to sneak some food into the theater. The second girl said she missed the movie because she has a broken leg, and it took her a while to get all the way to the cinema, so she's waiting for the next viewing. The third girl said she came back from her friend's house and wanted to see what movies are playing. Lucy took a good look at them and knew exactly who was lying. You've got 6 seconds. It was the girl with the broken leg. Her left leg is broken, and instead of holding the crutch on the left to support her weight, she has it on the right side. Alex was at the park, snapping photos of trees and flowers for a photography competition. When he finished, he placed his camera on the bench and tried to disassemble his equipment to head back to his car. Suddenly, he heard someone running, and his camera was gone. He saw the person going inside a blue car. Alex got the rest of his stuff and followed the robber. He then saw the car parked outside a restaurant. He walked in and saw three people sitting down. Can you guess which of them is the robber? You have 5 seconds. It's the one on the right looking at the menu. The others are eating. They've been there for a while. Sarah and Michelle went to explore an abandoned castle. When they walked in, the door shut behind them and the lights went on. In front of them, three doors appeared. They must pick the right one to make it out alive. Behind the first door, there's a hungry crocodile that hasn't eaten in two and a half years. Behind the second door, there's lava from a volcano that erupted two weeks ago. And behind the third door, there's a massive seawater pool with a whale shark you must swim through. You have four seconds to decide. Crocodiles can go without food for 3 years, and lava can remain hot when it's well insulated for months. The best option is the whale shark. Even though it's a shark, we humans are indifferent to them. Tori was the lead actress in a movie. They were filming on a deserted island to make sure nobody was around to interrupt the scenes. The day before the shooting, Tori was found unconscious in her room and the crew member called Detective Martin on the case. He interviewed four suspects. The producer said he'd be scouting the island to find a new location with a lake, and he didn't talk to anyone all day. The writer said he'd been making some adjustments to the scripts in his trailer. The camera operator said he was testing his filming equipment when a stranger approached him for directions. He ran off to help them. The director was sitting on the beach, writing down notes about small details he wanted to add to the movie. Detective Martin figured it out in three seconds. Can you? It was the camera operator. Hey, this was a deserted island. Nobody was there needing help. Anna is a vegetarian restaurant owner. The day she opened the new restaurant, she invited her family to celebrate. Her sister came first, but found Anna unconscious on her office floor. She immediately called the police, and they questioned everyone that entered Anna's restaurant that day. The electrician said he came in for some final checks 
to make sure everything works. The cleaner said he came in for his shift, but Anna was okay before he left. The chef said he had been sharpening his knives for the meat carvery station. The police arrested the chef. Why? Here are your three seconds. This was a vegetarian restaurant. There's no meat carvery station. Jenny, a famous singer, went abroad for her first concert. She checked into a hotel and went to perform for her next show. When she returned to her room, she realized all her jewelry was gone, and she called the police. Detectives checked the cameras and saw that nobody left the hotel that night. The person who took them was still inside. There were only three people at the hotel. Michael said he couldn't sleep and spent the entire night in the lounge reading. Jason, the manager, said he spent the night in the back office watching TV because it was quiet. Margaret said she went to the hotel's pool to swim alone. The police knew who was lying. You've got two seconds. It's Margaret. Hotel pools are closed at night for maintenance. Jason and his wife are millionaires. They have three sons and two daughters. All kids were going on a camping trip together, and the couple will have the weekend for themselves to relax. When they woke up the next day, all their money was taken from their safe, and they called the police. When the officers showed up, they interviewed the three people who were in the house that morning. The butler said he was cleaning the car after driving the kids to the camping site. The chef said he was busy preparing a huge breakfast for the family. The cleaner said he finished cleaning quickly that day and left early. The police figured out who was lying in one second. Can you? It was the chef. Since the kids were gone, he couldn't have been cooking breakfast for the family. Nellie is approaching a picturesque field. She's carrying a package. If she doesn't manage to open it before reaching the field, she won't survive. Can you guess what's in the package? Nellie is skydiving. There's a parachute in her package. After a safe landing, Nellie decides to take a walk in a sunflower field. Can you help her spot three odd things about this area? This straw man is winking. This sunflower has teeth. And there are two suns in the sky. Nellie walks too far and gets lost in the woods. She wanders around for a while and meets four guys sitting on one big tree. Can you help her rank them in order of foolishness? The fourth person is cutting the branch where he sits. So, he's the silliest. The first person is sitting on the branch that will soon be cut by the second guy. So the first person is the second most foolish. The second person doesn't see that he's about to fall too. So, he's the third. And finally, the third guy. He's a bad person, but definitely not a stupid one. Nellie moves on and finds a highway. Three people offer to give her a ride to the nearest town. Can you help Nellie choose the safest driver? Take a look at this guy's car. Its tires are flat, and there's a puddle of engine oil spilled out of the car. Probably not the safest choice. This beautiful lady and her car are both translucent because they're ghosts. As for this gloomy trucker, he looks pretty reliable. Yeah. Nellie enters the local coffee shop and meets two ladies. Both ladies tell her that they are daughters of a famous billionaire. Can you guess who's lying? The lady on the right is a liar. The logo on her t-shirt is fake. Therefore, she's not rich. Nellie doesn't have any money to buy food. The coffee shop manager feels sorry for her and offers Nellie a free lunch. But first, she has to solve his tricky riddle. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. People have stepped on me, but not many. I never stay full for long. I have a dark side. What am I? Can you help Nellie win her free food?
The correct answer is the moon. Nellie is eating and looking through the pictures hanging on the wall. Suddenly, she sees something weird. Can you spot any odd details too? This person appears in both pictures, looking young and pretty. But the time distance between these two photos is 100 years. Nellie enters a flower shop and sees the owner putting bouquets in big vases. If he puts one bouquet per vase, he will end up with one extra bouquet. And if he puts two bouquets per vase, he will end up with one extra vase. How many vases and bouquets does he have? He has three vases and four bouquets. The flower shop owner offers Nelly a job. He has just received a delivery. There are three boxes labeled red roses, white roses, and red and white roses. Each box is labeled incorrectly. Nelly has just one chance to pick up a flower from any box and then label the boxes correctly. Can you help her accomplish this task? Nelly should take a flower from the box labeled as red and white roses. Since they're labeled incorrectly, this box should contain either red roses only or white roses only. Let's suppose that Nelly finds the red roses. Now she can label this box correctly. We know that the white box cannot have white roses. Therefore, now Nelly can label the remaining two boxes correctly. After earning some cash, Nellie decides to book a room in the local hotel to get some rest. The manager offers her to choose from three empty rooms. Can you help Nellie pick the best option? There are cracks in the window glass in the first room. Very unsafe. Hmm. And there's a zombie hiding under the bed in the third room. So Nellie should choose the second one. Nelly locks herself in the room. She opens the window and stands nearby, breathing fresh air. Suddenly, she throws something out of the window. Nelly passes out very soon after doing that. That's a mystery because she's perfectly healthy and nobody did anything to her because the door is locked. Can you find any logical explanation for what happened here? Nelly decided to throw a boomerang out of the window. The boomerang went to the maximum distance and returned back straight to her head. After a while, Nelly wakes up with a headache. She goes to the local shop to buy some aspirin. She spots three odd things about this place. Can you see them too? There's corn on the shelf along with napkins and toilet paper. The announcement offers an 800% discount. That's too good to be true. And finally, the shopkeeper is wearing two pairs of glasses. Suddenly, the shopkeeper begins to yell, Someone stole my money! And he locks the customers inside the shop and calls the police. They arrive and question four suspects. Maya says, I came here to buy water for my 12 o'clock yoga class. I'm 20 minutes late because of you. Bob says, What's the point of stealing cash? Everyone knows that people use cards nowadays. Hmm. Lily says, This shopkeeper is a bad person. He deserved that. And Nellie replies, Sorry, I was focusing on my own purchase. I didn't see anything suspicious. After hearing that the officers had arrested one person, can you guess who? Maya. Take a look at the clock on the wall. It's only 10 a.m. She's not late, therefore she's lying. Nellie is walking down the street. She sees a cozy garage sale organized by Miss Green. The fixed price for any item is only $1. Amy buys an old dress. Phil takes this beautiful antique vase and Vivienne purchases a shabby vintage suitcase. Nellie comes over to Miss Green and says, oh. Madam, you've just sold an expensive thing for a song. What does she mean? Can you guess?
Vivian lifts this suitcase quite easily, so it's probably empty. And besides, it has holes in the bottom. Therefore, it can't be precious. This vase isn't antique. It has a sticker from a dollar store. Although this dress is dirty and torn, it has a large, expensive brooch pinned to it. So many gemstones can't cost just one dollar. Nellie asks Miss Green if she can use her bathroom. Miss Green says, Sure, it's at the end of the corridor. Nellie is walking down the corridor and confuses the doors. Nellie ends up in this messy kitchen. Huh? The door won't open. Can you help Nellie find a key? It's in the teapot. And Miss Green enters the kitchen and tells Nellie, I'm a witch, young lady, and I'm going to give you a gift if you manage to solve my riddle. Oh, yes. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. It starts with tea, it ends with tea, and it's full of tea. What is it? Can you solve this mystery? The correct answer is a teapot again. Miss Green brings Nellie to her dusty basement and says, One of these three doors leads to a magical world, and the other two are fake. You have only one attempt to choose the correct door. Good luck! Oh, yeah! Can you help Nellie out? She should choose the third door. Take a look at the floor. Dusty footprints lead to the third door only which means that doors one and two are fake. Nellie opens the third door and enters an enchanted forest. There are four ways to cross it, but all four passages are pretty dangerous. A hungry dragon is waiting for her on the first route. A massive fire is burning all over the second path. And the third path is basically a windowless tunnel. And the fourth passage is full of scorpions and snakes. Can you help Nellie choose the right path? She should pick the third way. The tunnel doesn't have windows. But who said it doesn't have an exit? Nellie walks the tunnel and finds herself in a beautiful castle. The guard says, This castle is yours if you manage to crack my riddle. I can fill a room, but I take up no space. What am I? Can you help Nellie win the castle? The correct answer is light. Karen is at a corporate party. Her boss, Mia, brings a bunch of identical envelopes and says, I personally put the grand prize in one of these envelopes. It's a certificate for a trip to Bali. But no worries, the remaining envelope contains consolidation prizes prepared by our sponsors. Can you help Karen win the trip to Bali? There's a lipstick print on this envelope. Mia has a similar lip color. She said that she had personally packed only one envelope, so the grand prize should be here. The day of Karen's flight to Bali has finally come. She calls a taxi to the airport. Soon, three identical taxis arrive at her porch. Uh -oh. But only one of these drivers can actually give Karen a safe ride. Can you guess who? The second car has a flat tire, and the driver of the third taxi is a werewolf. Take a look at his claws. It's a full moon, so he'll turn into a wolf soon. Therefore, Karen should choose the first taxi. Karen's luggage is too heavy, so she goes to the cash register to pay for the excess. Oh no, her card holder is gone. Karen asks three people standing nearby, have you seen a pink card holder? The cleaner says, I found two lost wallets today, but none of them look like yours. The cashier says, I was busy with another customer, so I didn't look around. And another passenger says, Don't waste time, honey. Block your cards as soon as possible. Who stole the wallet? Nobody. 
Karen put it in the fold of her hat and forgot it there. See? On the plane, the steward asks Karen to switch seats with another passenger. Karen can choose one of these three seats. Can you help her figure out the best option? This man has very long legs, so he'll probably kick the back of Karen's chair all along. The second option is next to this elegant lady, but she's stealing money from another passenger. Probably not the best company for a long hour flight. Although the third guy looks like a vampire, it's just a costume. He's sitting by the window, but the sun rays don't bother him, so he's the best option. Karen arrives at a fancy hotel in Bali. The manager shows her the three best bungalows uh -oh. to choose from, but only one of them is safe enough. Can you help Karen to make the best choice? The first bungalow doesn't have a door, which makes Karen an easy target for robbers and mosquitoes. And there's a scorpion under the bed in the third bungalow, so she should choose the second one. On the beach, Karen meets three ladies who claim to be millionaires and show her pictures to prove it. But one of them is fake rich. Can you guess who? It's the first lady. She's just modeling for an electric toothbrush commercial. So her luxury is artificial. Karen is walking down the shore and sees a party. It's a beach wedding, so the bride and groom don't wear traditional costumes. Can you find the newlyweds among these people? Take a look at the cake. The letters say Harry plus Amy. This lady is wearing a necklace with the name Amy, so she's the bride. And now look at the flower garland around her neck. Only one person is wearing the identical garland, this guy, so he's probably the groom. Karen spots uh -oh. her former classmate, Tom, among the guests. He's talking to a strange lady. The lady is wearing a hoodie and standing with her back turned to Karen. So Karen can't see her face. Tom and the lady leave together and hide from everyone on the roof of the beach restaurant where the party takes place. Later that night, Karen also visits the roof. There's no one else here, but after checking the roof, Karen knows for sure which of these three ladies is Tom's secret girlfriend. How did she know? The third lady's dress is decorated with gold sequins. She lost one sequin on the roof. Tom sees Karen and invites her for a walk along the shore. She spots four weird things right away. Uh -oh. Can you see them too? A mermaid is hiding in the waves. This sandcastle has electric lighting. Tree branches flutter in the wind to the right, but the flags to the left. And finally, the moon has a creepy face. The next morning, Karen goes to the buffet breakfast. She wants to get a smoothie, but there's no information about the ingredients in English. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, Karen is allergic to strawberries. Can you figure out which smoothies are safe for her? It's all about the color. Only the green and yellow smoothies don't contain any strawberries for sure. Other options are risky. Karen enters a spa center. The manager asks her to wait for 15 minutes. Karen takes a seat and falls asleep. She wakes up after a while and finds out that someone had given her a heart-shaped tattoo. She questions three suspects. Bobby, the client, says, Lady, I've just arrived on my motorbike. If I see any crazy tattoo artists around here, I'll tell you. Leah says, I've been cleaning the bathroom within the last 30 minutes. And Tony, the massage therapist, says, Sorry, I was busy with my client, so I didn't look at you at all. Who's lying?
Bobby. This motorbike has flat tires. And besides, it was already there when Karen entered the spa. Luckily, the tattoo was temporary and the massage therapist helped Karen to remove it. But he charged her $5 for his help. Karen arrived at the spa during happy hours when they offer a 45% discount on all services. So Karen paid only $12 for a one-hour massage. Also, she had a pedicure for $7. When Karen left, she found a $50 bill on the ground. How much money did Karen spend in total? Can you count? Karen spent a total of $24. As for this $50 bill, it's fake, so it doesn't make any difference. Karen brings her clothes to the local laundry owned by three sisters. She returns to pick up her stuff in five hours. Unfortunately, someone has burned her favorite dress with an iron. Karen gets furious and questions the sisters. Mia says, I didn't iron today, it must be Pia. Pia says, nah, I was planting roses in the garden all day. It must be Gia. And Gia says, I don't know who's guilty because I've been away all day. Who burned Karen's dress? It was Pia. Take a look at the garden. Can you see any roses? Exactly. Karen returns to her hotel room and uh -oh. finds a huge bouquet in a vase. The note says, love, your secret admirer. Karen calls the reception to find out more. The manager says, one of the hotel's male guests ordered the flowers, but I can't reveal his name. Only three male guests stay in this hotel at the moment, Hans, Jacques, and Will. Karen meets them all at the beach and spots her secret admirer right away. Do you have any clue who it might be? Karen received pink lilies. Take a look at Hans's shirt. It has a print with pink lilies. He loves these flowers, but this doesn't prove anything. Will has a tan line from a wedding ring, and he's taking pictures of his wife surfing. But Jacques is writing in the sand and his handwriting looks suspiciously similar to the love note. Spotted! Karen and Jacques go for a walk. He brings her to a pier with three boats. Jacques says, If you manage to guess where my boat is, I'm going to give it away to you. Can you help Karen find the right answer? Someone sleeping on the second boat, but this doesn't mean that the person is the owner. The third boat is called Jacques, but this name is quite popular. Let's take a closer look at the first boat. Can you see the red trousers on a hanger? They match perfectly with Jacques' jacket. Therefore, this is his boat. Wow. While working late at night in a top-secret laboratory, Michael finally managed to create the DNA of a hybrid monstrous creature. After all that hard work, he decided to grab a quick coffee and donut as a little reward. But he came back and saw that the specimen had disappeared from the incubator. Hmm. Michael lined up Ryan, Jeff, and Laura and confronted them. Who took an important top-secret piece of research I was working on? Ryan said he'd been busy doing some additional research on a separate project and had no idea what was going on. Jeff said he hadn't touched the hybrid creature and had been in the archives digging through some files he needed. And Laura said she'd been in the bathroom the whole time. So who took the specimen? Michael never mentioned that he was dealing with a hybrid monstrous creature. Jeff just let himself get caught. Better think smart next time. Anne absolutely loathes winter. But just like anyone else, she has to go out and do stuff. She had just moved to a snowy city for work and experiences some of the coldest winters. But she managed to make it to the mall to do some quick shopping through a huge blizzard. When she came back to her parked car, she discovered that someone broke into it and took her belongings. 
when the police lined up the three suspects, they each gave their stories. Francesca said she had been polishing her car outside and didn't know anything. Ned said he had been shopping for clothes, and Earl said he had been sitting in a cafe on the upper floor of the mall. The police arrested the suspect. Who was it? Francesca. She was polishing her car outside in the middle of a blizzard? That's not only illogical, but not safe either. She just gave herself away. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You don't have enough time to choose which door leads to freedom. You hear a monster coming, so you check out the doors quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, it's the right door. The third door has a sign, freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? The last door. It says not to trust the signs, but it doesn't mean that they're lying. The first door says to take the door on the right. Not necessarily the last door on the right, but just the one on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the right door, as in the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? So it's the last door on the right that leads to freedom. Mason was extremely happy when he got the news that his sister Jane was coming to town. He had just started a new job and couldn't wait to host her for the first time. She was only able to see some nice pictures of the places he visited, including where he lived. When he picked her up from the airport, he noticed something slightly off about her. She was robotic with her responses and seemed stiff with her movements. She wouldn't eat and only insisted that she wanted to rest up. Strange. Had he been watching too much sci-fi? After a while, Mason hears a knock on the door, and to his surprise, it's Jane. But I thought… Jane tells him that the Jane in his apartment is an imposter. When the Jane in the bedroom goes out and sees the other Jane sitting on the couch, they're both in shock. They both try to convince Mason that they're the real Jane. But who will Mason believe? It's pretty normal to come back from a trip pretty tired and wanting to rest. But how did the second Jane know where Mason lived without prior knowledge? And she didn't even break a sweat running up to the apartment. On a nice day, Vivian, who lived in a town on the seashore, decided to go for a hike alone. But after hours of trekking, she ended up on a section of the forest she wasn't familiar with. Before her were three paths. One path had bare footprints leading away. Another had human shoe prints, and the third was right by the river. Which one should Vivian take to find her way? The river path. Since she lives in a coastal town, the river mouth most likely ends up in the sea. That way, she could figure out where she is. Melissa is sharing a train car with three other people. It's a very hot day, and the air conditioner doesn't even work. James starts complaining and only calms down after opening the window. Melissa lays down her red silk scarf her grandmother gave her next to her. Judith compliments it. Robert, a senior, mentions that he forgot to bring a gift for his wife who will pick him up from the train station. James has a crush on Judith. After a while, Melissa goes to the bathroom and comes back to find the scarf missing. Who was the one who took it? None of them. It was a hot day and James opened the window. The wind sent the scarf flying right out of it. Some zombies have Diego trapped in a room. 
They're surrounding him. He's stuck and can't escape. Their arms are breaking in and reaching for him. When Diego looks around, he realizes that he's in a small newspaper stand with magazines and pocketbooks. And looking around him more attentively, he finds a roll of tape nearby. How can he avoid those nasty bites? The only way for Diego to escape will be to tape those magazines around crucial parts of his body where they can't lay his teeth on him. It'll be light enough for him to run away from the zombies without getting hurt. Plus, he'll have plenty of reading material for the road. Evan got lost in a forest, and just his luck, it was snowing. The only thing the police searching for him found were four parallel lines leading into the forest. Something doesn't seem right, they thought, and took several people into questioning. Nick said he had been at the store buying some groceries. Vanessa said she had been babysitting. Christina had been at work the whole time. After hearing the stories, they arrested Nick. Why? Nick was in a wheelchair. The four parallel lines were left by Nick rolling into the forest and back out. It's the beginning of a new school year, and Dave started a new job as a computer studies teacher at a local high school. Another fellow teacher, Roy, didn't really welcome him because he wanted that position. But at the end of the day, there was a security breach which leaked out a lot of important information about the school. When the police questioned everyone, including Roy and Dave, they each gave their stories. Dave said, I was checking exam papers and was at the staff room the whole time. Roy said, I was preparing homework for my classes when everything happened. Who should the police arrest? Who was lying? Dave. There wouldn't be any exams on the first day of school. Gareth is in a pickle. He's at the police station looking at the lined-up suspects, one of whom stole Beth's bag while she was having a picnic in the park. He observes them. Beth describes the culprit as someone big, no hair, and wearing a black jacket. All the men lined up matched the description. Gareth looks at each of them, and they all have one distinct trait that makes them stand out from each other. Suspect number one has a beard. Number two is wearing shorts. And number three is wearing glasses. Gareth knows immediately who to arrest. Who is it? Suspect number one has dirt all over his boots. The rest are all clean. He ran through the mud tracks while Beth was having a picnic. Paul is a photojournalist for a local newspaper. It's his day off and he's hanging out at a party. Suddenly, a famous actress, Heather, enters the dance floor. Paul takes only one picture of her before his phone runs out of power. The next day, Paul shows this picture to his boss and gets a huge bonus. Can you guess why this picture is so exclusive? Heather is stealing money from this lady's pocket. Paul is looking at the office open space from the second floor. Suddenly, he spots a time traveler among his co-workers. Can you see this person too? This guy's outfit is too old-fashioned. Paul leaves his workplace to get some fresh air and eat. In a while, he returns and finds his boss unconscious on the floor. Oh. Paul calls doctors and questions three co-workers standing nearby. Rachel says, I entered his office 10 minutes ago to discuss my ideas, but he said he's been too busy and asked me to leave. Mm. Stan says, I don't know what happened here because it was my lunch break time. I was eating my hot dog outdoors. Hmm. And Lily says, 
I think I saw some suspicious man in a black outfit entering his office. Hmm. Can you guess who's lying? Stan, he has an unpacked hot dog on his desk, so he was definitely doing something else during his lunch break. Paul arrives downtown to take some pictures. He's looking out the window of one of the buildings and sees this horrible scene. Why is he doing it? Do you have any ideas? This lady is a magician, so it's just a staging. Finally, Paul enters a spooky building where he's supposed to photograph. Suddenly, someone locks the door, and now Paul is trapped inside. He wanders around for a while and finds these four doors. A creepy voice announces, Only door number five is the escape door. As for the other three doors, dangerous monsters are waiting behind them to eat anyone who dares to enter. Oh boy. Can you help Paul choose the right way? He should choose the first door. The symbols on the doors are actually numbers. Yeah. Paul enters the exam room and sees two more doors with spirals. Oh. The voice says, You should choose the spiral which consists of two separate parts. Hmm. The other door hides a magical portal leading to a black hole. Can you help Paul pick the right door? It's the second one. Paul opens the door and finds himself in a suspicious hall. He sees a metal door with a combination lock, but it's locked and requires a six number code. What would you suggest? The correct code is three, seven, five, four, one, nine. There's a hint hanging on the wall. Paul should literally enter three sevens, five fours, and one nine. In the next room, Paul meets a mad scientist, the one who had imprisoned him. He says, I'm gonna set you free if you crack my last riddle. So listen carefully. I have a head and a tail that will never meet. Having too many of me is always a treat. What am I? The correct answer is a coin. The scientist says, Okay, you can go now. There are three doors for you to choose from. Unfortunately, each door is hiding some danger. There's a tank with a hungry shark behind the first door. And there's a bunch of balloons filled with toxic gas behind the second door. And there's a giant cobra waiting behind the third door. Can you help Paul choose the safest option to escape? Paul should choose the second door. Toxic gas is inside the balloons, so if he passes by carefully without popping them, he'll escape safely. Yeah. Paul returns to his neighborhood. He's walking down the street and sees a tree with a bunch of birds. Can you spot an antisocial owl among them? This owl is looking away from the rest of the group. There are two houses with two single women living next to Paul. One of them used to live in poverty all her life, but today she robbed a bank. Can you spot this woman? The first lady is the robber. She spent unnecessary money on food, which is far more than one person needs. Paul is having a family meeting. He asks two of his sisters to sell an equal amount of homemade cookies. The cost of each cookie is $1. Paul tells them, you shouldn't eat the cookies that you're selling, and you should sell all the cookies. At the end of the day, all cookies are sold, yet neither sister gained nor lost a dollar. How is this possible? The first sister bought a cookie from the other one, and the second sister bought a cookie from the first one, and so on. Oh. 
In the evening, Paul is having a family dinner, but one of the guests is an imposter. Oh. Can you guess who? This gentleman is a ghost. He's levitating in the air. The next day, Paul arrives at his workplace and sees his co-worker standing near this mirror. Lily says, It's rumored that anyone who stood up in front of that mirror at 4.44 ended up disappearing forever. The guys decide to debunk that myth. Lily approaches the mirror at 4.44, but nothing happens. They laugh at the rumor and get back to business. After work, everyone goes home. But Lily stays for a little longer to finish her work. After doing that, she walks up to the mirror and disappears. The clock says 7.16. Why did it happen at the wrong time? The rumor was about the mirror time. 7.16 is the mirror image of 4.44. Paul wants to rescue Lily. So he goes to the most famous wicked witch in his town. The witch says, Okay, young man, I can get your friend out of the looking glass if you help me in the kitchen. Which one of these seven potion pots will get full first? Do you have any ideas? Outlets to the first and fifth pots are blocked at the initial point, so they won't fill. Nothing is connected to the sixth pot. The outlet under the second pot is also blocked in the end. Outlets to pots 3, 4, and 7 are blocked in the middle, so they won't fill. Therefore, no pot will ever fill. The witch is satisfied with Paul's answer. She shows him four doors and says, Your friend is behind one of these doors. You only have one chance to pick the right one. Good luck! Can you help Paul find Lily? There are flower symbols on each door. Paul should pick the door with a lily. Yes! Paul rescues Lily, and the witch offers him to fulfill one wish. Paul goes home to ask advice from his family. His blind father wants to restore his sight. His sister wants a puppy, and his mother wants to be super rich. Paul makes a wish, and all three people get what they want. What was Paul's wish? Here's what Paul told the witch. My father wants to see our puppy digging in a pile of gold coins. Paul arrives at a luxury boat club to make a report. Four millionaires are talking about their boats. There are a total of eight boats, two in each color, red, green, blue, and yellow. Each millionaire owns two boats, but no millionaire has two boats of the same color. Alex doesn't have a yellow boat. Bob doesn't have a red boat but he does have a green one. One of the millionaires has a yellow boat and a blue boat. And another millionaire has a green boat and a blue boat. Charles has a yellow boat. David has a blue boat, but he doesn't have a green one. Can you guess the colors of boats owned by each millionaire? Alex has a red and a green boat. Bob has one green boat and one blue boat. Charles has a yellow boat and a red one. And David has one blue and one yellow boat. You're a treasure hunter, okay? Today, you find yourself on an island. There, you'll need to crack twisted riddles, figure out the main mystery, and find the treasure. In the end, you'll calculate your points. Your old friend gave you a map of a small island for your birthday. He told you there were pirate treasures hidden in that place. Of course, you want to find them. You have a flare, a bottle of water, a compass, a flashlight, a phone, and a shovel. You sail to the island's southern coast and go into the jungle. Here, you see three roads with signposts. The first sign shows a bear, a lion is painted on the second one, and a pirate flag is installed in front of the third road. Which way should you follow?
It's the 21st century now. The pilots have long been gone. Now there are no people on this island. It seems the flag indicates the route the pirates took when they went to hide their treasures. A lion and a bear may indeed live here, so you opt for the pirate's trail. You make your way through the dense jungle, leaving marks on trees not to get lost. Then you notice a small hut. You go inside and see a big chest with a rusty lock. Inspect the room. Is there anything here that can help you open the chest? There's a tire iron in the corner behind the broken chair. The lock seems weak, so you can easily tear it off. You open the chest and see nothing but an old map of the island. There are three marked points with treasure on the map. You leave the hut and follow the route to the first place. You find the wreckage of an old wooden ship. You wander over its deck. Suddenly, the boards crack under your feet, the floor breaks, and you fall into the hole. It's dark and cold here. You turn on your flashlight and see a chest. You touch it and hear a growl. A zombie pirate is slowly coming towards you. After a second, you realize there's nothing to be afraid of. Why so? Hmm. The pirate isn't real. It's a hologram. Behind it, a small projector is installed. It creates this digital zombie pirate. You pass through the hologram and open the old chest. There are precious stones inside. You put them in your pockets, get out of the ship, and look at the diamonds. You understand they're fake and made of plastic. You open the map and cross out the dot with the first treasure. Now you go to the second chest. Along the way, you continue to mark trees. You hear some hissing sound nearby. It's a snake. You don't know if it's venomous or not. It raises its head and looks at you. What will you do? Find a long stick and point it at the snake so that the reptile attacks it. Move to a safe distance and wait for the snake to crawl away. Hiss back loudly to scare the reptile off. You need to step back slowly not to provoke the snake. Now, when you're at a safe distance, just go around and continue on your way. The map leads you to a mountain cave. It's very dark and damp inside. You take out a flashlight, but it doesn't work. The battery has run out. You go into the jungle to make a torch out of twigs and leaves. But at that moment, it starts to rain. Look carefully at the cave entrance and think about how you can light it up. The solution is in your pocket. Send the flare into the cave. The dark place gets illuminated by the red light, and you can see a chest inside. The chest is huge, but unfortunately light. Inside, you find one gold coin. It seems real, but where is the rest of the treasure? At this moment, the red light goes out, and you hear the flapping of wings. You look up and see hundreds of eyes glittering in the darkness. Bats! They scream and fly in your direction. You don't have time to run out of the cave, and there are no more flares. What are you gonna do? Hide in the chest. There's lots of space. You jump in and close the lid. Bats fly past you and beat their wings against the chest. There is a crashing sound. You can feel the ground trembling beneath you. Then, there's silence. You get out of the chest, go to the exit, and find that it's blocked by large stones. Fortunately, your phone is still working and can catch a signal. You call the rescuers and give them the coordinates of the island. That's not enough. The island is rather big, and the rescuers need the exact location. What will you tell them? You went into the jungle in the southern part of the island and left lots of marks on the trees. Rescuers can find you with their help. That's all. Now you just have to wait. A few hours pass. You've drunk all the water and fallen asleep. The rays of the sun wake you up. Someone has removed the stones and cleared the exit. But who did this? Rescuers or someone else? 
You cross out the second place on the map and head to the last treasure point. You make your way through the jungle and notice a grizzly bear nearby. It sees you too and stands up on its hind legs. The beast looks extremely unfriendly. You scream to scare the animal away, but it's not working. What shall you do? Run as fast as possible because bears are big and clumsy. Climb the nearest tree and sit there until the bear leaves. Lie on the ground in the fetal position and don't move. Bears run fast, so it'll easily catch you. They can also climb trees. So lie down on the ground and freeze. The bear sniffs at you for a few minutes, then walks away. According to the map, you have already come to the place where the third treasure is. But there's nothing around. It must be hidden underground. Natural diamonds might be here. Gold might be hidden over there. And pearls can be right there. Where should you dig? You have already found plastic diamonds. Maybe the ones hidden here are fake too. Also, real diamonds are mined deep underground in rocks. Natural pearls are found on the seafloor. They can't be here. You need to dig the spot with the gold. You take out a shovel and dig for a few hours. You open the chest and put all the gold coins in the bag. (laughs) Now you need to get to your boat quickly. Night falls. On the way, you meet pirates. They have sabers, parrots, and eye patches. They want to catch you and take away the gold. You understand that they are not real pirates, but just pretend to be them. How did you know that? The first pirate has a watch on his wrist. The second pirate is wearing sneakers. The third pirate holds a sword. There's a price tag on the sword handle. You've exposed the pirates, but they're still going to steal the gold. You run away to hide. You see three tall trees. Which one should you climb? There's a venomous snake hidden among the leaves of the first tree. When you look at the second tree, you notice a broken branch. You climb the third tree and wait for the fake pirates to pass by. Why is everything fake here? What's happening? At that moment, you hear someone calling your name. You look down and see a zombie pirate climbing a tree. You think it's another hologram, but the pirate grabs your foot with his cold, bony hand. You scream, and the pirate disappears. Did you see a hallucination? Was it a dream or reality? How do you find out? The pirate was a dream. It was night when you climbed the tree. It's morning now. You've been sleeping on the branch all this time. You get down and go to the boat you used to come here. It's located in the southern part of the island, and you realize you're lost. Because of the fake pirates, you missed your turn. But now, how can you find out where the south is? You need to look at the sun. It sets in the west. So you can figure out where the south is. Focus on the moss. It grows on the north side of the tree. That means the opposite side is south. What shall you choose? Or is there an easier option? You have a compass, remember? You go to the south and come to the shore. But you don't see any boat. You look around the area and realize that someone has dragged the boat into the jungle. How did you know that? There were human footprints and a long trench left by the boat in the sand. Someone was pushing it. You follow the trail and find the boat. It's hidden among the leaves and bushes. But you don't rush to get it because it's a trap. 
Why do you think so? Behind the trees, you see people silhouettes. A hand sticks out of the bushes next to the boat. You need to get out of here as soon as possible. You turn around and hear, surprise! These are your friends. They made this quest for your birthday as a present. The whole island is one big theme park dedicated to the pirate's life. All the pirates are actors, and the treasure and the sunken ship are just scenery. The snake wasn't venomous, and the bear was tame and wasn't going to charge at all. There are no real treasures. You get upset, but feel happy at the same time because you've been through a real adventure. Now it's time to see the score and find out how well you've done. 0 to 4 points. It seems you're not used to walking in the wild jungle looking for treasures. 5 to 8 points. You love adventure, but don't act like a professional. You need to train your attention and logic more. 9 to 12 points. Jungle, wild animals, a treasure map. For someone, it's a challenge, but for you, it's fun. 13 to 15 points. You're a real explorer and treasure hunter. You can easily navigate in foreign lands and cope with any problems.